Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today used her stimulus check in 2020 to buy a laptop and a webcam and has been on the rise ever since. She's been nominated for Best New Starlet, Best Leading Actress, and Girl Girl Performer of the Year and has been the biggest fan of the adult industry since she was in high school. Welcome the beautiful Freya Parker. Wow. Hello. Hello. (laughs) How's it going? Good. You know, I remember the first time I saw you. Oh, boy. It was... No, this is good. Okay. It was at um, (laughs) Julia Ann's pool party. Oh, yeah. And I remember seeing you and you were wearing this really, like, pretty, like, floral dress. And I was like, that girl has such a beautiful face. I mean, the rest of you is great, too. But I just, like, remember... I'm like, she is so pretty. I was like, who is that? And I... can't remember who I asked and they said who you were and I was like oh my god and they were like yeah she's new and I think at that time I wasn't really shooting that much or I was only shooting girl girl for twisties Mm. and I literally (laughs) brought your name up to them all the time (laughs) like when they would ask for girls I'm like Freya Parker Freya Parker I'm like she's so beautiful and then I got to shoot you with Lulu Chu you did which I felt special because technically I think someone else was supposed to shoot it that day Mm -hmm. and then you just ended up picking it up and Mm -hmm. I got there and I was like (gasps) Holly's going to shoot my pictures. Like, I was so excited. I was also like, I will say I was a little disappointed because we were making you like an ice cream parlor person. I was an ice cream parlor person. And we like put you in like a baseball hat. And I was like, she deserves more than that. (laughs) I felt like you deserved more than a baseball hat. Thank you. Thank you. The hat was a struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout the whole scene. But I was happy to be there. And I was in it too. I was the boss. Yeah. I made myself an extra and I was terrible. (laughs) I don't think you were terrible. I don't think I've ever watched the scene. I did. Well, how was I? It was fine. It was like funny. Yeah. I was like, there's Holly. She's in my scene. I, what did I say? Didn't I tell you to just like, like do a better job scooping ice exactly, cream or something? Yeah, as most people something would. Something like that. Tell me that. Yeah. yeah. I'm a really terrible actress, <laughs> but I put myself in as extras in scenes so I don't have to pay anybody you know, else. That's but I'm so bad. It's fine. Yeah. Well, you know, there's <laughs> the life had other goals for me. <laughs> there you go. It's fine. Yeah, no, I just, I, I remember being so nervous that day, but everyone was like super chill and laid back and we just got to like do our thing. And I was a, re- I was a replacement too. I don't think I was like scheduled to work mm-hmm. that day. I was like in the shower and my agent called and was like, what are you doing? And I was like, showering. Mm-hmm. And he's like, can you be downtown in 45 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I was like. Yeah. Yeah. The girl showed up with uh, a bad test. Lovely. But I think it was, I don't remember if it was a false positive or not, which happens, but this is like one of the reasons why I insist that I, they have a clean test before they show up to oh, set. yeah. Because her results were coming in that morning. Right. And never, it's a gamble. You're on set, you're yeah. through makeup, That's and tough. then it's like, oh, you can't work today. Right. Like, I hate that. Yeah. And it's a horrible thing to like... I have to send someone home like that. It, yeah. feels, it feels really yucky. It's like, sorry, not only am I sending you home, but go to a doctor yeah. immediately. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And it was like, I mean, it wasn't, I think it was, it wasn't a big deal. But I mean, she, I can't remember if it was like a false positive, which happens sometimes the test results are not right. um, re- accurate uh, in terms of like, you pop a bad test, I think is what we call sometimes it. Sometimes we'll do a retest. Yeah. Just be like, hmm. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. But definitely, if it's even remotely questionable, cannot shoot somebody right. because we are diligent about that That's stuff. That's right. Yeah. Actual health. Yes. Please. So let's talk uh, about you and your origin story. So your parents were Jehovah's Witnesses. Both of them. Yeah. What is, and tell me a little bit about Jehovah's Witnesses for people that don't know much about this. I know the only thing that I really know is that they don't believe in holidays. Yeah, there's no holidays. There's no birthdays. None of that. And also all my grandparents are Jehovah's Witnesses. So I grew up with like, I never celebrated Christmas with like my grandparents around or anything like that, um, just because that's how they were raised. Um, But when my mom gave birth to me, I was the last child um, or the second child, I should say. She got disfellowshipped. So that's like leaving the religion, basically. Mm. And for those of you that don't know, like, how that religion works, it's very culty. Like, it's insanely culty. 
Um, they are very like strict about who comes in and out of the church. Um, it's just, it's a really weird atmosphere. I haven't stepped in there into that church probably since I was like 12. Mm -hmm. I think that's the last time I went. Um, but I wasn't raised a Jehovah's Witness my, because my mom obviously left the religion when I was super young. So did she leave of her own accord or was she kicked out? That's really a good question. I think around the time that her and my father got divorced, you're not allowed to get divorced either. Yeah. So her getting divorced from my dad, it was like no one could speak to her. Her own parents couldn't speak to her. Um, and my dad was never officially a part of the religion. He never got baptized so no one, like, did anything to him. Like, he was allowed to just walk away freely. But, like, my mom got kicked out of the church because of that. So so wait, so if he was never baptized, did he still consider himself a Jehovah's Witness and went to church and did yes. all the things? Yes. They didn't insist on him getting baptized? No, because the patriarchy. Ah, uh, <laughs> that thing. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're a man? That's it's fine. fine. Wow. You can go do coke on the weekend and then come back to church on Monday. <laughs> God will forgive you. So, <laughs> wow. There's that. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, how did that feel growing up with no birthdays, no holidays? I mean, did you go to a secular school and see other kids enjoying those things? And so I actually did grow up with those things because okay. my, my mom didn't. So she wanted her kids after she left the church. She was okay. like, I want my kids to be raised differently. I don't want them to be raised in that atmosphere. So when she left the church, mm -hmm. were you still like a baby? I was a baby. Okay. I was probably like two months old. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my entire life has been holidays and birthdays, but it's also really interesting having a parent that didn't have those things growing up. Mm -hmm. Like my mom would constantly mess up holidays and birthdays because she didn't know like how to do them. Oh my God. So Can was, you give me an example? She was just, she'd get really bad anxiety about like, if she'd be like, where do you want to go for, you know, dinner? And I'd say somewhere. And then she would just like have like these mini meltdowns and at the time like when you're 12 you're like why are you ruining this for me mm -hmm. like why but mm -hmm. as an adult I'm like oh because you literally didn't have that growing up mm -hmm. and you don't know how to like you know she did the best she could but it was just uh you know it was interesting how was like Christmas and like stuff for her we made our own traditions obviously mm -hmm. uh my I have an uncle on my mom's side who um Obviously, it's not. He's he's gay. He's not a part of the church either. So we spent a lot of holidays with my uncles. Um, and yeah, we just kind of made our own small family tradition. But it's weird, like, seeing other people be like, oh, I can't. I'm going to my grandparents for Christmas. I'm like, what is that like? Mm. What is that like? I mentioned the word luck to my grandmother once. And she was like, there is no luck. There's only God. And I was like, girl, reel wow. it in. Um, so yeah, I just like, I'll, I'll never know what that's like. That was the only thing for me that was like really odd to see yeah. people like have big family Christmases and stuff. I never, yeah, never had that. And so did your, so your dad had left the church too. So he would celebrate the holidays. So my parents got divorced when I was really young. Right. And then my dad moved away to Mississippi. He was like, bye. See ya. And so that's kind of tricky because I, I actually don't know. He says like, no, I moved away and I continued going to church. He didn't. That's mm. a lie. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I think that uh, according to his ex-girlfriend, like they did celebrate birthdays and Christmases, but that's another thing. I never spent a holiday with my dad. I never spent a Christmas. And the really messed up part about that is when you have a parent that's a part of that religion it's not, I'm not showing up because I'm a bad father. I'm just not showing up because I'm a man of God. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like he could always just kind of blame it on his religion as to why he never came to holidays or anything like that. That's weird. Yeah. So I'm assuming you didn't have like a very close relationship with your dad? Not until like my preteens. Okay. And even then it was just very, it was very odd. I'll, I'll always see my father as like, a friendly family figure, mm. but not really a dad. Mm. Like my Mexican mother was a dad. Mm. Like she was very much my dad. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like if anyone was bullying me, if I was ever having trouble with boys, my 6'2 mother would show up and, and there wasn't a problem anymore. So <laughs> wow, 6'2. <laughs> yeah, did not need a father, just had her. 
And she was able to fulfill both roles. Yeah. Yeah. She very much so. Um, I also had like lots of strong male figures in my life that weren't my dad. Mm -hmm. I grew up with lots of uncles and cousins. So I had all of those people. Um, And then, yeah, just a super tall, scary mom. Yeah. 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 And your mom, your mom had drinking problems too, right? She did. Um, But once again, not even until like my Mm -hmm. preteens, my entire childhood, like my young childhood was very normal. Mm -hmm. Um, Aside from the fact that like I didn't have my dad around, it was Mm -hmm. very normal. I don't know. I always say like once I got an attitude is when my mom started drinking, (laughs) (laughs) which is true. And I think at at a young age, I didn't realize that it was alcohol. I was just like, man, my mom is like not a nice person. Mm -hmm. But the older I got, you know, I'd come home and she'd be drinking already. And so, yeah, I think that the the drinking problems happened around my preteens. But um, yeah, my overall childhood was pretty nice. Yeah. And relaxed. Yeah. They say that your brain is kind of like f- almost fully wired by the time you're nine. So I guess having that early childhood, that was like where you, you feel like, it seems like you feel like you had a pretty like good childhood, yeah. like solid childhood yeah. that, that is very helpful. And then after that, like. It was. Well, and that's the thing also, like growing up and people being like, oh, you're so much her for your age. And it's like, no, I just have like a mother that's like kind of checked out but like at a young age you just recognize that and you're Mm -hmm. like oh okay well I'm making dinner for myself tonight Mm -hmm. and you know you just kind of take those roles on at that young age you know kids are incredibly adaptable yeah for sure definitely yeah my daughter doesn't have any of those (laughs) everything's fucking done for her it's like a battle for me to get her to do anything herself (laughs) (sighs) but you know Maybe I should start no, being no. like, no, make your own dinner. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry, girl. Sorry, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so what first sparked like your interest in sex? Like when did you start being interested in the idea of sex? I think I've always been sexual, mm-hmm. which I know people say all the time. Like, oh my God, I've just, I was always a hoe. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't think that's true because I was always interested in sex, but not with other people. Hmm. Like the thought of being sexual with other people always gave me a lot of anxiety. Okay. So in what form were you interested in sex? I like, I liked watching other people have sex. Okay. Or like the thought of other people having sex, um, but not people having sex with me. Mm. Yeah. And I, I liked, you know, I was very like comfortable with my body and just whatever, but I, I never like, I don't know, even through middle school, I wasn't like a cute girl by any mm-hmm. means. So it wasn't like, Oh, like, Maybe I'll make out with my boyfriend. Like, girl, what boyfriend? (laughs) So, (laughs) yeah, I don't know. I think that it was always, like, in the back of my brain, but I just didn't know how to, like, I didn't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you generally prefer women over men. Is that true? Um, I do. I do. Sexually, I love both. Mm -hmm. I love having sex with men because they bring something to the table that, you know, if I want something more, like, aggressive, Mm -hmm. I like to have sex with men, mm-hmm. but when it comes to like having like an attachment to someone and just something super passionate and emotional, I prefer women. Mm. So, and and I guess as far as dating is concerned, that's why I lean towards more women. Um, but yeah. The second time you ever had sex with a man was on camera. Yeah. For, so that means that you only had sex with a guy once before One time. then. So like, were you fooling around with girls first before guys or oh, you, yeah or were you just super late starter overall no i well i guess yeah because i lost both of my virginities when i was 18 so i had okay. sex with a girl for the first time when i was 18 mm-hmm. i just turned 18 you know what's so sad is that we say like that's a late starter that's like when you become of age right I know. like that should be I'm like, like legally in the that's legally that's the that's, legal age you're allowed to have sex right so we should be like oh i'm a normal but, yeah yeah but no yeah i think um I started experimenting with girls because I think I I knew that I always loved girls. Mm -hmm. And then I lost my virginity to a girl that I met on Tinder. And it was so cute. It was like really pornographic. Like it was the most pornographic sex. Okay, well, I want to hear it. I've ever had. I had just turned 18 and I met this girl on Tinder and we like spoke back and forth for like a month or two. And then she's like, come pick me up. Because she was in college at the time. Uh And I was in my senior year of high school. Uh And she's like, come pick me up. Like, I want to come over. I was like, all right. So I pick her up. I bring her home. My 
intoxicated mother is like sitting on the couch watching like Parks and Recreation or something. <laughs> and I was like, um, hi, like we're going to go downstairs. And she's like, oh, okay, whatever you, and like, you just <laughs> ignore her. <laughs> just ignore her. Um, and we went downstairs and yeah, I just remember like, <laughs> I was so innocent. Like I lit candles and I like put on music because oh. I just wanted to be like romantic. And then I remember lighting a candle and like turning around and her grabbing my shirt and like throwing me onto my <laughs> bed. And I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like it was just really, really aggressive. And that like she was like squirting. Oh my <laughs> god! I never. I didn't even know girls could squirt. I didn't know what squirting Did was. Did you just think she was peeing? I, yeah, I was like, why are you like? What the hell is going on? <laughs> like, why is my bed so wet? Um, yeah, and I just like there was choking. It was just really <laughs> aggressive sex, and I was like, damn, like that's insane. Did you like it or were I you did, a little bit? Okay. And that's the funny part because okay. I had like made out with boys. I had like had oral sex and stuff with boys, but that's as far as that had ever gone. Mm -hmm. And I'd never really liked it. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, like this is just kind of weird to me. And then this girl comes into my life and just like has the most insane sex with me. And then I'm like, that was great. Like, when <laughs> can we do it again? We never did it again. It was a Tinder fling. And did also she know that you'd never been with a woman before? Yes, she did. She did know that. She did. Yes. And she was like, I'm still going to Come in strong. You. Yeah. And wow. she gave me the stomach flu, too. Which what? So after all of that, that insane sex, I got the stomach flu, which sucked. Um, but yeah. And so I was like, damn, okay. Uh, and I knew that that's not how all sex with women would go. Right, okay. But I was like, that girl's like nuts. Yeah. So then the second time you had sex with a woman, were you, what were you expecting and what did you get? Um, I think this girl, she was a dancer. And she did like ballet and stuff. Mm -hmm. And she was just like really laid back and chill and very mousy and like quiet. Mm. And so I just remember picking her up from dance class and she came over and we had sex. And it, it was just very, it was very romantic. She was very sweet. So I was like, see, I knew that this wasn't going to be all the time. Yeah. But like, yeah, I don't know. I also think that like porn in general has it like influences the way that young girls have sex yeah. with other women, not mm -hmm. even just with men. Um, because yeah, that first girl was intense. And then even the second girl was like, wow, these panties are so sexy. And I was like, just take them off. Like, stop talking about them. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, what? Were like, they? Where's, the, where's the camera? Yeah, they were. I did okay. a sexy cam. Okay. Well, just she was appreciating know, your choice. Uh, but I was like, God, where's like the cameras, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I just had sex with a couple of girls. And then I ended up like dating my best friend that I had known since like preschool. Oh, wow. I dated her after high school. Don't do that. Don't date. No. Don't date your friends. No. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I just kept, I don't know. I just became like a hoe for the ladies. Yeah. Like any girl that would have sex with me, I was like, okay. Let's go. Was it hard? Okay, so did you, how did your mom, did your mom know that you liked women and yeah. did she care? No, she literally did not care at all. That's she good. Was, um, I always tell, it's funny because my mom obviously was raised really religious. And for the first couple of years of, I would say like the first decade of my life, my mom wasn't entirely like open, like to certain topics. Like she has a gay brother. Mm -hmm. My dad has a gay brother. She like, mm. there were gay people around, but I don't, I wouldn't say she was entirely like, and it was her religion. Like it was the way that she was raised, but I think that it's ironic, like that she was raised that way. And then she had like a super like homosexual child. Mm -hmm. And then also like my sister's trans. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Dan Double whammy, girl. Wow. Like, <laughs> that's what you get. I hope you <laughs> learned something from this. Um, but she loves both of us, and it's fine. But, that's uh, great. Is your sister uh, male to female? Male to fem female. Male to female, okay. Yeah, which I'm like is so sad because, like, I love her so much. And I'm like, all I wanted growing up was a sister. And she didn't transition until I was, like, 19 years old, 18, <laughs> 19. And I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> like, you had to wait till I was an adult. Like, I, all I wanted was a sister growing up, <laughs> someone to share clothes with. It's fine. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but she knew, like, yeah. from a pretty, I think probably around, like, 15, I was like, eh. Yeah. Did you kind of all know? 
Was it not a surprise? Uh, I think, I don't know. I just had a very strong appreciation for women, Mm -hmm. which you can have and like not be into women. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think it was very obvious to her. I didn't even really have to like come out or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I like girls. My mom was like, yeah, (laughs) you do. (laughs) (laughs) Which is so weird because I remember like when I was going through adolescence, I used to have a lot of lesbian fantasies. Mm -hmm. And then when I got older, I like yeah. zero interest in women. You're just figuring like, your stuff none. out. Yeah. Absolutely none. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to take a quick commercial break before we get into how she got into the porn industry, because I feel like that's a, that's probably a whole story. Yes. So stick around guys. We will be right back. Hey guys, summer is here and you know what that means. Sunny days, warm nights, and the perfect time for that summer fling. Whether you're looking to make the most of a spontaneous romance or just enjoy the season with confidence, Blue Chew is here to help you shine. Blue Chew brings you the same active ingredients as those well-known ED treatments, but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. It's convenient, discreet, and ready whenever you are, so you can focus on enjoying every moment of this sizzling summer. Picture this, a beach bonfire, laughter, and that special someone that's been catching your eye. The sparks are flying, but you want to make sure that you're at your best when it matters the most. With Blue Chew, you can say goodbye to any worries and say hello to an unforgettable night. Or maybe you're traveling and meeting new people or just feeling the excitement of summer love. Blue Chew is your go-to for staying confident and ready for whatever comes your way. It's quick, effective, and it fits right into your summer plans no matter where they take you. Getting started with Blue Chew is a breeze. Just head over to bluechew.com, consult with a licensed medical provider, and get your prescription delivered discreetly to your door. No awkward doctor's visits, no waiting in line, just chew it and go. So this summer, let Blue Chew be your wingman with this special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Hey guys, we are back. Okay, so Freya, how did you get into the adult industry? The story that everyone is dying to, I'm just kidding. Um, it's rather odd. I think that it's odd because I don't like, I haven't gotten into porn and met other girls that have had this experience, but I'm a weirdo. So I was a huge porn fan, but not like, it's not like I would sit around and like masturbate to porn. That was not it for me. I was just intrigued by porn. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, this is really interesting. Like the industry as a whole. Yes. Like I remember, I think I saw like a documentary on Netflix or something. Maybe it was like when porn ends, which, you know, those were. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, There are a few of those. I was like, I don't feel like this is like a great example. Like, I feel like there's more to this. Like, how could Mm -hmm. this industry be thriving? Mm -hmm. And this is how it goes, right? So I get this a lot when people ask me about bringing um, like vintage stars on. Right. If they've moved on with their life in a successful way in which they've got another career that's not involved with adult or whatever, maybe their family or something they generally don't want to come back and relive their porn career yeah, because it doesn't do them any good. Right. Like financially, right? Mm -hmm. Because they don't have anything to promote or sell. Yeah. If you've made that successful transition out, Mm -hmm. you don't want to like out yourself. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stigma that follows it. Right. I mean, everybody knows that. So much stigma. So if you've managed to like move to the Midwest and start a family Mm -hmm. and you're like a soccer mom now and you're, you know, living, (laughs) why would you go on a porn podcast? Yeah. 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 Exactly. And be like, hi, I used to be this porn star. Like, yeah, they don't want that. Right. And so that's why you, you often can't get interviews with people who left the adult industry unless they're like still in it in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Or like they have some sob story that like they want to sell right. or something like that. And that's Hollywood loves that. Yes. They eat that up. Yes. They're like, oh, we love hurt you. We love women to regret the choices that they've made. Tell us all about it. Yes. So I remember seeing that. And then I think I saw like Janine. I think Janine did one yeah, of those. She did. And I was like, who the hell is Janine? And I was like, I think I had 
17 turning 18. I just turned 18 and I was like, who the fuck is this person? So I like fell down a deep dive. And that's when like I I was like, forget the porn that people are making today. Like, what is this porn that they were making in the 90s? Like, mm-hmm. what is this? Mm-hmm. And so I just like became obsessed basically with like learning about everyone that was and honestly the industry was so small back then Mm -hmm. it was small like Mm -hmm. now I can't it's so saturated but back then it was like you could count the directors on your hands like it was just you know so I just fell down like this hole of porn and I was like man this is like really crazy I think I want to like participate in this some way but I didn't know how and I had a desk job out of high school and I was like oh we all have dreams (laughs) I'll just be here on my computer. So. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't meant to be that way. No, clearly not. COVID. Ah, COVID. COVID will do it. COVID was the gateway drug to porn. I got to tell you, like, (laughs) so many people got into porn because of COVID. We thought the world was ending. Yeah. Some people were like, and OnlyFans was blowing up. People were making lots of money. Exactly. Exactly. And everyone was like, fuck it. I don't care. I'm like stuck in my house by myself. Yeah. And I can't pay my rent. Literally. And like the government doesn't care. They don't care at all. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened to me. Because at that point I had been, I went to AVN in 2020 and I was like, okay, I brought my friend Paige. And I was like, girl. We met there, right? Yeah, we did. Yes. I was doing interviews at the adult time booth. Yes. Yes. So I had been listening to the podcast. Actually, I was like, I've got to learn everything I can. And then I flew Paige out with me. Um, for the weekend and we went to the expo and I like dressed up. I was like, I have to have my little outfit on. Like I have to look all cute because I'm going to meet all these people. And I just wanted to get a feel. I was like, Paige, this is going to dictate the rest of like my life. Like if Mm -hmm. I go and I meet people and I like them and it's chill. Great. If I go and I'm like, that was fucking crazy. Never again. Back to the desk job. Mm -hmm. So I went and I loved it. I Mm -hmm. actually met Jenna. Fox. Mm -hmm. She like brought me to a bunch of parties that I was not old enough to get into. And I was just like having the time of my life. Yeah. And then I got on a plane and I went back to my sad desk job. And I was like, wow, that this sucks. Like it was like a withdrawal. And I was like, okay. So that was in January. And then obviously COVID hit. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, "Eh, I have to pay my bill. Because my job at the time entailed me sitting at a desk and interviewing people face-to-face from nine to five, five days a week. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't, I don't even want to be in an office. Like, I don't want to leave my house. Mm -hmm. And so I remember walking in one day with all my stuff and being like, sorry, like, I don't know what's going on out there. And I have to quit. And I remember my boss being like, you're not going to find another job that pays more than what you're making now. Surprise. Little surprise. Um, <laughs> April. Uh, so it was really funny because at the time I was making like $450 a week at this job that I was working nine to five, five days a week. So I was like, girl, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, that's not a living wage for anyone. Not even just for a 19-year-old girl, for literally anyone, mm-hmm. um, especially during a pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so I left. My stimulus check came in and I was like well, I don't know what to do. And I had a therapist at the time that I had been doing like Zoom calls with. And she calls me up like a month into COVID and she's like, I'm quitting my job. Uh, I just want to let you know, I want to be completely like truthful with you. I've been doing MFC for like- (laughs) Fuck off. Oh my God. I was going to say, okay. I was going to say like, (laughs) I was going to joke that she was going to tell you that she was joining OnlyFans. But it was not it's, a joke. No, it's not a joke MFC at all. MFC is my free cams, which is like the biggest camming platform in the world, by the way. Just for those who don't know. You literally, you I guessed it. it. I love it. So she calls me and she's like, I've been camming for six months now. I have more money in the bank than I've ever had. My and this entire, is a therapist. This is They're supposed therapist. to make like good money. Yeah. And I was like, girl. Well, I just quit my job. So like, what do you mean, MFC? Like, Do you, do you want to do a collab? I, I, <laughs> Just wait. So wait, really? <laughs> just wait. No, not really. Um, but it, it got weird. Things got weird. So okay. she was like, "Come over. I'll 
teaching your face right now. You're horrified. <laughs> you have no hair. You just don't know what's going to happen. So I go over to her house. She's like, you need this. You need that. You need this camera. You need this laptop. You need these toys. And I'm like, okay, like whatever. She shows me. She helps me set up my account. And next thing I knew, a week later, I was on MFC. And I think in my first week, I made like almost two grand. Wow. And I had gone on for like four days. Wow. And I was like, oh, I guess I can make more than that desk job. Yeah. And so, yeah, I I mean, I made that money back immediately from my stimulus check, which Mm -hmm. was amazing. And then I could pay my bills because at the time my mom had moved to Denver and I was living alone in the apartment She was still paying for it, but she's like, girl, when that lease is up, like, you got to get out. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Eh, okay. So I was just, like, trying to save money and put money away so I could move out. Mm -hmm. Um, And, yeah, so I started an OnlyFans, which, by the way, when you don't have any way of advertising yourself, it is not easy. I had lots of guys from MFC come and, like, join my OnlyFans, but there were so many, like, dudes— that I went to school with, they were like, hey, like, how's it going? And I'm from a small town. Yeah. So it was like the majority of the people paying my bills right now are like my neighbors. Weird. So, you know, where their stimulus check was going. That's right into mine, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's what happened. And I, I moved in with a friend and next thing you know. Damn. Yeah. That was like, that was a real breakthrough session that you had with your therapist, huh? I guess so. (laughs) Really life-changing, really changed the direction of everything for me. Wow. Yeah. Maybe your therapist was just, can I ask like how old she was? She was like in her early, early thirties. Okay. Yeah. So she was like, okay, I'm just like thinking about the therapists that I've had who've all been like in their sixties, seventies, like, you know. So yeah. when I, I'm picturing like my therapist right. like joining MFC, but right. I guess, yes, yeah, early that 30s. makes sense. Yeah. Wow. Well, and then it's funny because I'd be like camming and since you're, you can have friends on mm-hmm. MFC, people can like see who you're friends with. Mm-hmm. Sometimes she'd come in my chat and be like, hey girl, just checking in on you when I'm like fucking tits out. Like, and I'm like, how are you oh. feeling? Yeah. Well, it's funny because no one could know that we knew each other. Right. And so people would be like, hey, you guys should like collab sometime. I'm like, she knows my childhood trauma. Like, I can't <laughs> do that. What do you mean? I'm going to have to marry her after that. Like, that's just not, you know? So. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That is definitely a much different, ex- um, yeah, first time experience <laughs> that I've heard from, like, anybody else. Very odd. That's crazy. Yeah. So uh, you were camming. How did you move from that into, like, shooting partner scenes and ultimately studio scenes? At this point, I had been researching for like over a year and a half about like porn and agents and all of that. So I knew who Spiegler was. When I went in AVN, to AVN in 2020, like I knew who Spiegler was. You're very like thorough, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very thorough. And so I was like, I remember walking to, um, I was on the floor um, at AVN and he was like sitting on a couch at someone's booth. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, Paige, Paige, look, that's Spiegler over there. That's Mark Spiegler. And she was like, I don't know who that is. Like, I'm happy for you. I don't know who that is. Um, And so I knew who everybody was. And then it's funny enough, I met my current agent at AVN in 2020. He doesn't Mm -hmm. remember this, but I did. I went up and I introduced myself. Who's your current agent? I'm with ATML. I'm with Mark. Oh, you're with Mark. He's lovely. He's so lovely. Yeah, he's one of the best. Yeah. And shout out to Mark Schlechter. 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 Yeah, he's the sweetest. Super awesome and just cool. Yeah, he's great. And so, yeah, at that point, I had known who a couple of these agents were. I had done some research and I was like, okay, like maybe this is something I want to do. I mean, I've already been camming. My goal was to be behind the camera, but at this point, like I'm just trying to pay my bills. So, mm-hmm. whatever. What did you want to do behind the camera? I wanted to direct. Okay. Like that whole 90s era thing I went through, I was like, oh my God, mm-hmm. Andrew Blake. Yeah. Like that whole entire period was just like crazy to me. Yeah. And I wish someone would have grabbed me by the shoulders at 19 and been like, girl, that is not the porn we're making today. I know. It is not a reality. Nobody is made. And th- you could not sell Andrew Blake movies today. No. And like no one people, no one people, would watch them. They'd be like, people, where's the where's the yeah, POV shot? Beautiful, but you 
Yeah. No, there's no them. money in it at all. And it's devastating to me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had so many directors that I looked up to. And so I wanted to get into that. And then it just, I was like, whatever, you know what? This will be my break in. I'll break in. I'll show my holes. <laughs> then maybe they'll let me hold a camera. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, I, uh, I, funny enough, my first agent reached out to me on Instagram and I was like, well, I see lots of girls that I know with this agent and I don't really want to do the work and like try to reach out to other people. I now looking back, I wish I had, but I was like, it's fine. This'll do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, they sent over the, um, model, what it would even, would you call it a contract? It's not mm -hmm. even, doesn't even count as a contract to be honest with you, but I read over it and I signed it. And within a week I was on a flight to Vegas to shoot my first scene. What was your first scene? Well, it was a casting couch situation. Oh, what a surprise. And I was so nervous. So I actually made my mom buy a ticket to Vegas with me because <laughs> I was like, girl. So your mom knew you were getting into porn. Oh, yeah. And she was okay with it? Yeah. She was like, I saw that coming from a mile away because I would like sit there and like collect DVDs of like my favorite Andrew Blake films. And she's yeah. like, what's this one about? Like, what's in that one? You know? So yeah. like, she was like, I knew that that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so crazy she, that she came from such a strict religious background and ended up being so accepting of what the, you're doing. The rebellious side yeah. of her was like, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, she got on a plane with me to Vegas. She stayed at the same hotel as me. And then um, funny enough, that shoot ended up getting pushed because first time I got tested, they lost my urine sample. And I was like, <laughs> is this... <laughs> is what to be expected from getting into porn? Like, is this going to be regular? Um, but yeah, so I shot that scene a couple of days later and she stayed with me till um, till that was over. And then I left right from there to, to LA and she went home and I was like, bye girl. I'm going to go and it began. my life. Yeah. So tell me about your actual first scene. Like, do you remember who it was with? Yeah, it was for Net Video Girls. Okay. Um, with they Pat like to Tyler. do new girls. Yeah, new yeah. girls. Yeah. Once again, I see so many girls playing it smart. They're like, no, I'm going to wait till Browsers gives me my first scene. I was like, dude, put me in front of a camera. Like, <laughs> I didn't care. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I shot with Tyler. I think that's his name. Tyler Nixon? No. Oh. Ty his name's just Tyler. Oh. It's literally just Tyler. Okay. Um, he's like the POV dude or whatever. Mr. Lucky. Oh, okay. Some POV. Mr. Lucky POV. I think, I think. Yeah, okay. I could be wrong. Um, but the point is, is that he shot mainly POV for them. Gotcha. So the first scene was with him. It was my second time ever having sex with a man. My first time was great, but it was literally like, okay, February. So yeah, it was eight months. I wow. lost my virginity eight months prior and I had sex with one guy, and I was like, okay, let's fucking go. And how did it go? Um, did you tell him that this was your only hell second no. time having sex with no. a guy? No, I didn't even tell the boy that I lost my virginity to, that I gave oh. him my virginity. Yeah, because I was like, mm -mm, no, he can't know about that. And it was great. I loved the first time I had sex with a man. It didn't hurt? No. It really? was like um, it was like mind blowing. It changed like the trajectory of that everything. Was terrible, really. Oh yeah, I hear that a lot though. It was really painful. Really, I bled, and the guy sucked. Yeah, he kept his shirt on because he had like pimples all over his oh, back. Oh lord, he was also a terrible like boyfriend. That's so sad. Was not nice to me. No, yeah. this boy was he did not. not deserve my virginity. No, he didn't. No, he didn't at all. Um, but this boy was not my boyfriend. Uh, and I lost my virginity at my stepdad's house, which is, I mean, come on. Like, there's nothing more pornographic than that. Mm. But I was, Unless it was with your stepdad. Then, <laughs> yeah, then, <laughs> then... Then it would be actually... Sorry for another time. Yeah. Uh, but no, I was dog-sitting for him, and I just uh, was like, oh, yeah, you can, like, come over and hang out. By the way, I'm not having sex with you. I told him that. I was like, we're not fucking. Like, that's mm -hmm. not going to happen. That Did you initiate it? I think it was kind of mutual. Okay. Like, I think throughout the night we were like, okay, fine. And I had sex with him. And because I had waited so long and I was so comfortable with my own body mm -hmm. and like, whatever, when we had sex, it was like, oh, like I was able to relax. Mm -hmm. It went in. And I remember crying because like, it was such an overwhelming feeling. 
Wow. Like it felt so good that I was like, there were tears. Wow. So yeah, I was just very like, whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I was like, get out of my life. <laughs> Don't so ever do that to me again. So you didn't like catch feelings afterwards as they say no. you do on the first time. No, I didn't. I just caught some plan B and <clears throat> went about my business. <laughs> okay. So then you're shooting with Mr. Well, actually, Tyler. some some lucky some <laughs> some lucky, some lucky motherfucker <laughs> that shot POV. That's right. And you didn't tell him, but nope. obviously you'd had such a good experience with your first one. Yeah. Like you obviously weren't worried about it hurting or anything like that. No. And so how'd the scene go? It was great. I had practiced <laughs> with a toy. Of course you a did. A couple days before. Of I was course like, you did because you were that thorough. I was like so I was scared. Expecting nothing less. <laughs> I was like, what if it doesn't go in? Like, what if he goes to put it in and it doesn't fit? Like, I was so scared. So... Yeah, I just, I practiced and then I went and did the scene and I think that it went smoothly. Um, I didn't, there was a little pain after because I was like, this was porn sex we were yeah, having. so it lasted a long time. Yeah, I never douched before. Day. I didn't know what a fucking douche was. Did he tell you to? Yeah, well, here's the thing with new girls, right? It's a little like bring you a douche. And I'm like, dude, I know that you're like used to having sex with girls that like are having sex. I'm not having a lot of sex, so whatever. But he gave me this douche, and he's like, this is how it works. And, like, now looking back, I'm like, fuck you. Like, don't tell me how to clean out my coochie. I get that I was, like, 19, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Mm. Uh, aside from that, it was fine. Yeah. And yeah. then how did you feel afterwards? Great. So did you feel like this was the right choice to oh, make? Yeah. You weren't doubting your decision? Not even a little. I was like, I want to get on a plane and go to LA and shoot more porn. Like I was, I was like, it's go time. Wow. Let's do this. What, yeah. what was the thing that you liked the most about it? I think it was just very, <clears throat> it's something that I had thought about for so long. It was like this fantasy in my brain that was never attainable. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, oh, well, I can think that all day long, but that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, I was fulfilling something that I had wanted to do. And I just got to do it. And it felt like very like, wow, empowering and fun and cool. Yeah. So obviously you were a big porn fan, like before you entered the industry. Right. So were there any people that you met that you were like, like, who were you most excited to meet or maybe work with? It's a really good question. And I actually can't say, cause we're not friends anymore. <laughs> but, oh, I know who it is. Oops. Sorry, Jesus. Um, but no, she was like, that was like my number one. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, don't meet your idols. Um, I think aside from that, I want to say, oh God, Manuel, I'm sorry. Like Manuel Ferrara. I was like, that's Manuel Ferrara. I remember the first scene I did with him. I was like, <gasps> I was like so anxious. And I like remember his penis not fitting inside of me because I was like so like wound up. Yeah. And we had to like take like 15 minutes before the scene to just like relax mm -hmm. and actually be able to have sex. Did he know you were a starstruck? I don't think so. I never let anyone know what I was. Mm. Now looking like I'm, I've been in for almost four years and now I'm comfortable to tell people like, you know what? Mm -hmm. You were a hottie and I had a crush on you. But now like I could do that now. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, hell no. It was mm -hmm. like, Manuel Ferreira? How do you say you're like, huh? Never heard of you no, before. No, no, you are. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I tried to like, not let people know that I adored them. Any any other women that you were excited to work with? I think, um, God, there have been so many, honestly. Um, there's so many that I wanted to work with that I didn't get to work with, mm -hmm. where I'm like, oh, shucks. Have um, they left the industry now? Yeah. Mm. Like Nina. Oh, my God, Nina Hartley. Oh, Love is she not her. shooting anymore? No. Oh, okay. Um, I haven't seen her in a bit. But she's like, I have a poster of her on my wall because I'm like, queen yeah so yeah everyone though i was just kind of starstruck by everyone i was just happy to be there letting people you know having people let me touch them i was like oh okay i'm special Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> i mean with your vast knowledge of the adult industry and like the history and behind that have you ever been interested in doing like a book or a documentary or a podcast or anything like that i yes but the interesting thing is that I don't, it's not even interesting. I just don't put myself up on like, I feel like you have to be kind of arrogant to do that. And I know mm. that sounds weird, but it's like, oh, my life is so interesting that people like have to want to know about it, you know? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I feel like that's something other people tell you, like, you should write a book. That's mm -hmm. when it's okay for you to write a book. Yeah. But I mean, like more about like the history of porn. 
You know what I mean? Oh, like for me to write. Yeah. Wow. I have never thought about that, Holly. Really? No. Huh. I should do that. Yeah. (laughs) I would love to do that. Yeah, you should. Because I am currently moving right now and Uh I just found an entire case of notes because I would just sit there and watch features like Mm -hmm. Wicked movies and I would just write notes and notes and notes and notes on them. And I'm like, I could literally, I have nothing to use those for, but I just Mm -hmm. kept them because they make me feel nostalgic. I mean, it's kind of like a, it's an interesting and cute angle I think is like the idea of like this girl falling in love with the porn industry and like the history of the porn industry and you can almost tell the story of the porn industry through you learning about it yeah and experiencing it and experiencing it wow that's beautiful it's a different kind of take I don't think it's been done maybe I should do it yeah I mean what would I call it 25% is fine for me oh okay (laughs) sure (laughs) just give me your paper. it's on film (laughs) 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 <laughs> but yeah, you should think about it because yeah. a lot of people don't know I know about the, like the history of the adult industry. I was toying with doing a whole historical series on the industry, but I just have to. But you time. are the person to do it. Like your mom. That was another person. I was yeah. like, Sue's fucking Randall, bro. Yeah. Sue's walked so we could run. How did you, how disappointed were you when you met her? <laughs> no, are you kidding? She is the most fiery, like just. <laughs> She's fiery. And I'm yeah. like, oh, you're crazy. I yeah, like it. She's totally crazy. Um, but no, that's a, yeah, I don't know. I just, I had like this very profound love for porn. Mm-hmm. And then also getting into it, that love has really changed. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there are certain things about porn that I really hate. Mm. And I never would have known about those things had I not gotten into the business. What about porn do you hate? I think it's just very, I wasn't even around when it wasn't corporate. Mm-hmm. I've been in porn since porn has been corporate. Yeah, it is pretty corporate now. Um, but there's a word, and I can't remember what it is, but it basically means to feel nostalgic for a time that you never experienced. Mm. Um, and that's how I feel about porn. Mm. I was not around when porn, when I thought porn was cool. Yeah. And I think that it's just very corporate. And I think that the expectations have been raised without, and people like don't want to pay rates and stuff, but I'm like, like, look what you're asking these women to do. Yeah. You know? And it's all about like data. Yes. It is quality over quantity. And it's, you know, not for everyone, but for a lot of people. And at least like in the 90s, for the majority of the directors that were shooting, you got a good day, you know? You got really cool stuff and they shot amazing photos and there was food on set. I mean, that's asking for a lot today. Yeah. I mean, we used to be able, I mean, I didn't start working in the adult industry until 98. Right. Um, But I mean, I remember I would have an entire day just to shoot box covers. Oh, yeah. Mike talks about that all the time. And we would like bring in sets and like yep. build sets. I'm like, right. I used to shoot these box covers for Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. And they were like. Just amazing. Like the day would be like 15 grand. Right. Just for box covers. That's astonishing. You yeah. can't, some people can't even sh- do a feature for 15 grand now. Oh, I know. Like. Yeah. It's crazy. Huh? Yeah. So that's, I think that's the part that I'm like, that's what breaks my little porn heart. I know. Because I'm like, oh, and that will never be the same ever again. No. There are some companies that are kind of resemble an outline of that. Yeah. But it will never be that. There's just too much content. It's too easy to make. Yep. Because it's not just the internet. It's also like the rise of the consumer camera. Yeah. You know, so oh, you totally. didn't have to shoot on these huge like Panasonic massive cinema right. cameras. You could get like a handy cam. Yeah. Oh, that, people that you could prefer afford, it, yeah, honestly. That you like, could shoot on. Mike will shoot some of my stuff with a nice $12,000 camera and my fans would rather just buy something that I shot on my phone yep. in the bathtub. Because it feels, it feels, it feels real. real. Yeah. 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 Caden Cross wrote a feature with you in mind and described you on set as having a bit of Sasha Gray streak in her. As a porn super fan, how did that compliment make you feel? <sighs> I remember reading that. It was in my AVN newcomer interview. Um, and I was like, Kaden, oh my, oh my God. First of all, she's an icon, but I just was like, that's so interesting because I, 
I can't tell if people say that a lot to me because they've heard that she said that, but I hear that frequently. Mm. So um, I'm like, did you hear, did you see Caden's comment? And that's why you're like saying that? Or yeah. is that genuinely something that people see when they look at me? I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting because what a freaking pedestal, man. Yeah. You know, like she's all the way up there. Yeah. And she was in for what, six months or something? It wasn't that long. Yeah, I don't think it was that long. And so she just blew up so quickly. I remember meeting Sasha. We shot like, I think her second scene ever. Wow. Yeah. And I remember Mark Spiegler coming to us and telling us about her. And he was like, oh, you got to shoot this girl. She did this uh, scene for, I think it was Fashionistas too. she did. Mm -hmm. and he's like, and she like asked the guy to punch her in the stomach. And he was like so impressed by that. And I was like, wow. Like, oh, okay. Well, well, we're we, not going to, we're, yeah, we we're probably not going to shoot that, <laughs> but okay. She's, she's into it. And I remember meeting her and she was in the dressing room and she had like a journal Mm. And she was like writing right. something, writing. And I was like, what What are you like doing? And yeah. she was like, oh, I'm like journaling my experience. And I was like, okay. That's wonderful. All right. All right. You know, but like, I was just like, okay, who is this girl? Yeah. And then I remember I did an interview with her. Um, we used to do like, these little interviews for Suze.net. And I asked her like what her goals were in the industry. And she was like, oh, I'm like here to change the industry and like how people like perceive porn stars. And uh, she and quite was, literally did. Yeah. And I was like. Okay. okay. All right, girl. And she did. she did so quickly. And she like, she came in with a very, like, I think she was one of the first girls that I met. And we see this a lot now because I think people really come into the industry now with like a career focused, career driven mm -hmm. uh, agenda because right. they see it as a career. They see it as a business, especially now with the personal platforms and you can own your own content mm -hmm. and you can make a lot of money. Um, but she was like kind of one of the first ones that I felt came in with an idea. Oh yeah. And she was going to do things a certain way and she was going to execute it. And then like, she was going to leave. Like she had a plan. And she did it. And she did it. And I don't think I've ever seen anybody come in with like a plan. Yeah. Most people were just like, well, I'm here and I'm going to like. Well, and girls, I, and girls, we see that all the time now. Yeah. But it's like, you guys. Yeah. Like she, that's so crazy. And yeah. then obviously she had her time on Entourage and um, now she does a bunch of streaming stuff. Yeah, she's a big and DJ too. Oh, see, yeah, and a I woman actually, of many talents. I saw. I don't know if she's DJing that much anymore, but I remember looking up one of like her live mm. DJ sets, like in Mexico City, and there were so many people there. That's crazy. So many people, and they were all going fucking crazy. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, that's not like she did it. Like she. Came in, she made her mark, and she, like, successfully transitioned out. Yeah. Which, like, almost nobody does. Yeah. I wish I could ask Caden to this day to clarify. Not that I would ever ask that, but, like, I don't know what entirely, like, what part of me resembles that. Because I'm, like, clearly not the part where I blew up. <laughs> um, <laughs> still waiting on that. Um, but, no, I think uh, I think she's an astounding performer. Well, I would say, I mean, you're very intelligent, you're focused, you do your research, mm -hmm. like you, you come in with like a very specific idea in mind. I mean, I've only shot you once mm -hmm. and it was a last minute ice cream shop thing. <laughs> this is true. So I feel like I don't really, like, I haven't really been able to experience like the Freya Parker experience, Freya which, is, Parker which is sad and that could change. Yeah. Even though I'm not really shooting anymore, but you know, um, you never know. Really? You know, you never know. But <laughs> but so I, I can just say that like from a personality, like intellectual level, mm. but in terms of I like see. your performance. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if you, do you like to get punched in the stomach during you scenes? You know, it never really crossed my mind. <laughs> That's what you're missing. maybe I should reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was just like really there to push the boundaries, you know, and, and like she, do yeah. crazy shit. Oh yeah. But also like uphold like a, a certain like level of intelligence and integrity too. Like she really saw it as an art form and she wanted to experiment and do this right. crazy shit and, you know, like lick a toilet seat and stuff. She but really, like, she opened the Pandora's box of like gonzo. Yeah. Like to this day, like when I see girls doing crazy shit, yeah. I'm like, you know who did it first, don't you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and a lot of times like before the girls who do like crazy shit would be like girls who like couldn't get hired for other jobs mm -hmm. or something. You right. Know? And they were like, well, I guess I'll do this because like, you know, this director is pushing me to do it and I right. so desperately need work. But Sasha was like top level talent, yep. could get any gig she wanted. Right. She could be like a polished like contract star yep. and like not, and she was like, no, I'm, I'm yeah. doing it all. 
I'm going yeah. all the way. I don't give a fuck. She was just very odd in the best way possible. Yeah. Like she just did, she did weird stuff and made it look cool. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Pop off. Are there any retired porn stars that you wish that you could have worked with? Obviously Nina. Mm-hmm. Icon. Um, that woman like changed the way that I saw the industry too. I was like, wow, like she's so cool and captivating. Um, retired. Well, you know what's really funny? I see people that I think are retired and then they'll pop up on my timeline. I'm like, what? I'm sorry? That yeah. person? Um, Shayla Laveau. Do you know who that is? Oh, yeah. She like came back and did some scenes for like a couple companies as a MILF. Hmm. And when I think of Shayla Laveau, I think of like that tiny little girl yeah. from the 90s. Um, Mickey Dial, too. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. See? So I just, I don't know. Uh, I would say like Tara Patrick, but she has like an OnlyFans or something, doesn't she? I don't oh, know. Yeah. If, does she, she shoot like content? I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think she, yeah, she still shoots and she still goes to conventions and yeah. signs and stuff. I mean, she's married to uh, a man and lives in Italy and, you okay. know, like, she doesn't need to work. That's, but um, she, that's the life. yeah, but she does. Yeah, she still has an OnlyFans. Yeah. So probably just like people like that, just the the hot ladies. Yeah. And Tara still looks Oh my God. Amazing. Yeah. I saw her ex biz and I was like, oh, yeah, she's still beautiful. got it. She's beautiful. Yeah. Before we wrap up, you need to tell us about the Brad Pitt story. Man, I'm trying to think of an appropriate segue into this. And there really isn't one because porn brought me many adventures, but this one was um, unexpected mm. um, and very odd. And I've never told the story before. So, uh, Ooh, I'm excited. Here we are. I did one mainstream uh, endeavor, I guess we could say, uh, which was the movie Babylon Mm -hmm. with uh, Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. I was a naked extra. It was a three-day thing. That was it. Um, And I remember showing up and being like, hi. And there are like 200 extras there that have to get their makeup done. That have to get their clothing on. It was just a whole. How many makeup artists were there? Uh, like twenty. Wow. Yeah, and they were just intense in the summer, and it was hot, and there was no AC. It was Oof. it was awful. So the first day we got there, it was just like okay. I waited for two and a half hours to get my makeup done. They put my makeup on in ten minutes, and then they're like, okay, take a picture, and I'm like, okay, my wardrobe. They're like, you're naked. Oh, like I was t- informed that maybe I, and they're like, you're naked. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so they take a picture of me after doing my makeup for 10 minutes. They take it off and they're like, all right, go home. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, see you tomorrow. So I was like, okay. So they just had to make sure that everyone was prepared for the following day. Okay. So I show up the following day. I get my hair and makeup done. They drive still us. Still 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay. It's really quick. Um, and also they wanted, I have really natural curly, thick, crazy hair. And they were like, wash your hair in the morning and don't touch it. Come to set. And it's like a hot August day. It's Mm -hmm. like, my hair is just like, and I'm like, are you sure this is okay? They're like, it looks great. I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay. (laughs) About to be naked in front of these people. So they drive us to the location, which is like a theater downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, they're keeping everyone within the theater, but attached to the theater is a ballroom. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to shoot our scene. So there's like a hundred people in there and then the the nude extras, which get paid more than like your average extra. Mm-hmm. That was like the tea. People on sets, on mainstream sets, extras do not like finding out that other people get paid more than them, which mm-hmm. was like, I was like, oh, the entire time we were there, like people were like, how much are you getting paid? Like a woman literally asked us that. I was wow. like, this is really awkward. Um, so it was me, all of glass and um, a male performer who I will not name. Uh, (laughs) We were all there. Oh, and Emily Willis. So we were all a part of this scene. And the scene goes that Margot Robbie is going to dance her way through all of these people, jump up on top of the piano and start dancing. In mainstream, they shoot things over and over and over and over and over again. And you just have to go with it. Mm -hmm. And so they give us something called, I think it's called a Shibu. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but it's a sticker for your cooch. Oh, um, no, no, no. This is a uh, Merkin. A Merkin. Oh, well, the difference between a Shibu and a Merkin. Oh. A Merkin has hair. 
Uh, Merkin usually. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. so this is like just a, a crotch sticker. It's a crotch sticker. And it's like nude and it it's like nude. holds your crotch together. Yes. So it's literally a sticker that goes from the top of your pelvis. To, it's like a thong, basically. Yeah. A sticker thong goes all the way down to your crack. Okay. Okay. And that's it. So I'm wearing a robe. What do you do if you have to go to the bathroom? Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> so <laughs> I walk into this place and I'm like, all right, whatever. I take my clothes off. I look over Brad Pitt sitting there and mm-hmm. I'm like butt ass naked. I'm like, oh, I'm naked in the same room as Brad Pitt, which was like a very surreal moment for me. Mm-hmm. And Margot Robbie's there. She's going to dance through right past us, jump up on this thing. So we're doing it over and over again. Maybe like four, five hours has passed and we're still on this take. And God, how exa- like how many times did Margot have to dance? She's like exhausted. Yeah. I, I, I think they were putting like fake uh, sweat on her at one point. And at one point they just stopped applying it yeah. because she was just sweating profusely. Yeah. So we're dancing. I'm jumping up and down, doing my thing. I'm butt ass naked. And I feel warmth suddenly. And it's freezing, by the way. Inside of this actual fit, like ballroom, it's cold. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why is it warm? And I look down and there's blood and it's everywhere. All over the place, all over the floor. There are footprints from other people. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) And I'm like, that much? Oh, it was is bad. I have endometriosis. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's coming from me. Like that's, that's blood that's coming from me. Oh my God. And yeah, there's blood everywhere. And, um, I look down and all of it's like, it's like, oh, oh, we need to get you to a bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we need to get me to a bathroom. <laughs> and uh, the male talent without hesitation, starts yelling at the top of his lungs, someone get this girl a tampon! Someone get this girl a tampon right now! I'm like, Brad Pitt is standing like 20 feet away from me. Margo is standing on top of this piano, looking down at this fucking blood on the floor, blood on me. And and I just, God bless Olive, because she grabs this man's arm and she's like, stop talking, stop shouting. Don't, just stop, don't speak just quiet. And I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I don't, there's no bathroom. I don't know what, like, I started like panicking. And so she's like, we need to find a PA. There are a thousand people on set and not one of these people can tell me where a bathroom is. Wow. So I'm just walking around covered in blood. Don't know where my robe is. And, um, yeah, then this, I mean, luckily I'm like, it could have just looked like it was a part of whatever we were shooting, but it was not. So this woman, this random woman comes up to me and wraps her like jacket around my waist and she walks me to a bathroom and I was like, okay, great. Do you have anything for me? And she was like, no, I don't. I was like, how am I supposed to take care of the situation? She's like, I'll go find someone. And I was like, okay. So I just sat in the bathroom for like 25 minutes till someone showed up. Wow. With a tampon. Wow. Um. Yeah, no more mainstream sets for me because on a regular porn set, someone we would have been. had baby wipes, tampons, pads. No worries, girl. Sponges. Yeah. Like, we would have been so fucking prepared for that. And also, I don't think that's ever happened to me on a porn set. Wow. But of course, the one time I did a mainstream movie with yeah. uh, two very large celebrities. Yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was really unfortunate. And I think it wouldn't have been so bad if that guy didn't start yelling. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, what is wrong with you? Like, do you hate me? Did I do some, is this revenge for something that I'm unaware of? You have to tell me who it is after. I will. After. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. That yeah. is, that is quite that. Do you think that like Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie like remember you for that? As the and naked Margo, girl. And Margo's like, hey, God, this one time I was on set and this girl just started bleeding all over the place. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And also she was like, she wouldn't stop looking at us because we were naked. Yeah. So it was like me and also Erin Everhart, I think uh-huh. that's her name. She Erin Everhart. We were like scissoring at one point on this table for the movie. And I remember Margo looking over and I was like, dude, she's like looking at us. Like she's staring at us. So I'm like, yeah, I think that to this day, she's probably like, I don't know what that was about. Yeah. But uh, I hope not. I hope it's been wiped from their brains. Or maybe she was like really impressed by your scissoring skills. <laughs> and she was like, I wish I could do that, but I can't. You know, she had to go home and look me up on the hub or something. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe she joined your OnlyFans. 
You never know. That's right, Margot. We're on to you. Yeah, that's right. We know. We see you. We know. It was the blood that did it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Holy, really that's freaky. Hey, you know, these celebrities, they're like into freaky shit. They are. Because, you know, they got nothing. I feel like it'd be Brad. I mean, yeah. he was married to Angelina. And yeah. She was kind of into that. She was into, yeah. Probably made him nostalgic, honestly. Oh, he was like, oh. Just like <laughs> the good Angelina, old days. the good old days. Reminds me of the good old days with me and Angelina. It's bleeding girl. <laughs> Brings me back. <laughs> Brings me back. Wow. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, Freya, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having it me. It's such a pleasure. I have some questions for you for my Patreon members, which we'll do in a separate segment. Cool. So um, for now, can you just let everybody know where they can find you online? You can find me on Twitter at Freya's in Trouble. Because I'm always in trouble. You can find me on Instagram at Freya Parker XO. And um Yes. Oh, <laughs> you already know. Yeah. I already uh, know. Just Freya Parker on OnlyFans. That's about it for me. Awesome. Yeah. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram, X, also OnlyFans. <gasps> um, uh, go to hollylinks.com for uh, access to all of my platforms. I'm on a lot of them. And then, of course, if you want to support this podcast and get access to bonus content, such as this Q&A we're about to do, go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'll see you next week. <laughs>